Good morning, Tree Church kids and parents. It is time to do another great lesson. Today, we're gonna to be talking about spending time with Jesus. And we're gonna look at the story of Martha and Mary, these two sisters that were Jesus' really, really good friends. He loved this family. And we're gonna see what happens with Martha and Mary when they learn that Jesus is coming to spend some time with them. All right, then we're going to do some memory verse fun. We're going to have a great game. So get together, get ready for a great lesson. Here we go. Today we are talking about spending time with Jesus. Not just talking to him all day long. You should always be working towards the goal of constant conversations with God, letting the Holy Spirit guide your day. I'm talking about spending specific planned time with Jesus, reading his word, praying, and worshiping him. If you call yourself a Christian, a true follower of Jesus, then you must spend time with him every single day. Spending time with him just once in a while won't give you everything you need to get through your week. Spending time with God makes you feel better. You're ready to face tough situations. You feel calm and ready even when things around you seem bad or feel out of control. There's nothing in your life more important than spending time with God. It's easy to get that backwards. You can easily think that your schoolwork, your family time, your sports team, or your school play or music performances should happen before you spend time with God. Then you'll fit Him in. If that's how it feels in your life, now is the time to change. Plan a time every day to spend with Jesus. If you miss that time because something happens and things do happen, then do it later in the day, but don't skip it. There's a story in the Bible where Jesus tells us just how important spending time with him really is. This is Martha and Mary. They were sisters and they were good friends with Jesus. He loved them both and they loved him. In this story, Jesus was going to their house to visit. As soon as he sat down, Mary sat down in front of him and was ready to listen to every word. Martha had been very busy preparing the meal before Jesus came and getting everything just right to show her love and respect for him. But things still needed done. She had to clear the table and do the dishes and put everything back in order so the house looked clean and perfect. Martha looked in and saw Mary sitting on the floor. She couldn't believe that Mary wasn't helping her get things done. She went in and said to Jesus, I'm working so hard to make everything perfect for this visit but Mary is just sitting and talking. Can you tell her to help me, Jesus? Jesus looked at Martha and said to her, Martha, Martha. It's kind of like when your mom and dad say your name when you didn't listen very well to what they were saying. Next, Jesus said, Mary is doing what is important. She is learning from me, talking to me, and spending time with me. And this is what she should be doing. Jesus wasn't mad at Martha. He was teaching her that spending time with God is the first thing you should do. Then, everything else you do, even cleaning the house, will go better because you will still have your time with God on your mind. So what about you? Do you spend time with God every day? Do you make him the most important thing in your list of plans for things to do for that day? If not, God is certainly not mad at you. He wants you to fix your plans so that he is the most important thing to you every day. He knows that when you do this, everything else will go the way he plans. His plans are always the best. Here are three reasons to spend time with God every day. Take one. You should spend time with God because you'll be ready for tough situations. Take two. You should spend time with God because He'll calm you down. Take three. You should spend time with God because you'll treat others better. Remember, spend time with God every day this week and then it will become a habit. Treat others the way you want to be treated. We'll see you next week. What a great video story. 
So here we have these two sisters, Martha and Mary. And what I want you to remember is Jesus loved them both. It's so easy to sometimes read this story or hear this story and think, well, Martha was the bad girl and Mary was the good girl. And that is not how God saw them. God saw them as two people that he loved very much. And in this situation, then he took the chance to tell Martha, well, how you're thinking right now is, isn't the best thing for you, isn't what I want for you. Spending time with me is what's important. And so he wasn't saying, spend time with me and sit here, Mary, all day long and never help with the dishes and never, he wasn't saying that to her. He would have, I'm sure if he kept going said, yes, help Mary, treat her the way you want to be treated when this is over and once you've gotten. So what he, tell, what he was telling her was, put me first, Martha. And then all the other stuff when you do it is gonna work out better. It's gonna be easier. It's gonna fall into place because you're gonna be doing it my way and things will all come together. So spending time with him is so important. So let's go over those takes that were at the end of our video. So today they're just the reasons to spend time with Jesus. Let's do take one. Repeat after me, here we go. Take one. Great, all right. You'll be ready for tough situations. All right, parents, I want you to say it without the kids this time. Here we go. You'll be ready for tough situations. I want to talk to you parents too, because Jesus and the stuff we're learning and the basics of what we know from the Bible isn't just for kids. You need to know that when you spend time with God and when you take the time to prioritize him and make him the most important thing in your day, when something lousy comes up in your day, when something doesn't work out right or somebody's upset with you or you get that bad news or that bad health report, that you're ready for that. That you remember what you learned, that you remember that, okay, God's with me. God's not surprised by this. God understands what's going on. So kids, you'll be ready for the tough situations that happen in your life too. When you spend time with him, when you do your devotions, when you watch the videos and you think about these things. So they say, meditate on God word, God's word. What does that mean? And you think about it. You think, what does it mean, Matthew 7, 12? What does it mean to treat others the way you want to be treated? Why, why does God say that? Oh, because it makes you feel better. And thinking that through is meditating on God's word, is thinking about what God wants that to mean for your life. So when you do this, when you spend time, you'll be ready for those tough situations. All right, let's go on to take two. Repeat after me. Take two. I'll say it real loud as a family. Here we go. Take two. Good. He'll calm you down. So he will, he'll calm you down. Say that. He'll calm you down. God will calm you you down. We talk about this all the time, kids. Parents, you maybe never heard me say this, but we talk about why do we, why do we talk to the Holy Spirit? Why do we go right to him instead of gossip? Why does he say don't gossip because it's going to make things worse? Come to me first. Why does he say throw all your cares to me? Cast all those things on me. Why does he say do that right now? He doesn't say go talk to mom first or go talk to your sister first or call your girlfriends or dad go to work and chat with your buddies. He says come to me first because he says I want you to think of things my way and it'll start to calm you down. So if you're angry kids about your little sister and she's doing all these things and you're fighting with her and you say, God, I need you right now. I need to, God, and he starts to remind you, hey, remember Matthew 7, 12? Are you treating her the way you'd want to be treated? No, you're not. And he starts, and you go, no, God, I'm not. God, forgive me for that. All right, yes, God, you're with me. I can feel your presence. You, you would be calm, you would be kind. And then he starts to remind you of how he wants you to act. And so he calms you down. And the more you spend time with him, the quicker you listen to him. He's always there, he doesn't leave you, but we sometimes forget to listen, don't we? And so when you take the time to listen to him, right away he's going, okay, think of my way, think of how to do this, and he brings you from here, as we say in children's ministry, down to here, where you go, okay, I can do this God's way. All right, take three, here we go, so repeat after me. Take three, good, you'll treat others better. So you will, you'll treat others better. Good. So Matthew 7, 12, right? That's what this is talking about. You remember the things that God tells you. You remember how he treated people. Even, even the Pharisees, even people that didn't believe him, that didn't like him, that thought he was not God, that thought he was blasphemous, he still treated them kind. I was just talking about this with a, a friend. He didn't fight them, he taught them. And sometimes we read these words and it sounded harsh, but it wasn't harsh come from Jesus because he said, I want you guys to get the truth. 
And so he didn't fight them. He didn't fight with the government. He didn't. He taught these Pharisees. He taught these religious leaders the right thing to do. And so just knowing how he did things, you go, that's how I want to treat others. By reading the stories and seeing how Jesus lived and seeing how Jesus t treat other people, you'll treat other people better. Spending that time with him helps you go, okay, that person's really upsetting me right now, but God wants me to love them. God wants me to help them. God wants me to be kind. And he brings you down there and you go, okay, I, I can deal with this person the way that Jesus would want me to. Doesn't mean you have to feel all mushy and gushy about everybody inside, but it does mean that you remember that that's God's kid too. And he looks at them the same, he looks at you, he looks at Martha and Mary the same, and he loves them both. And he wants you to do the same with others. All right, remember these things today. Let's go over them real quick. You'll be ready for tough situations. He'll calm you down and you're gonna treat other people, people better. Spending time with Jesus, this is the results. This is the blessing and the benefit from that. Guys, remember, spend time with him every single day. He should be the most important thing in your day. Get it started that way and he will bless everything else along with it. I love you so much. Remember, Jesus is with you in this. He's not surprised by any of this and he wants to walk beside you and he wants to spend time with you. We'll see you next week. All right, guys, it's memory verse time. Pastor Phil here. Miss Ted, Miss Amelia. All right, we're gonna do 1 Corinthians 16, 13, and 14. We just started this last week, so we're gonna run through it a couple times and get you familiarized with it once again. All right, so we start with B up here. You ready, ladies? Yep. All right, here we go. Be, be on your, your guard. guard. All right, let's do that much again. Be, be on your guard. guard. Remember, we're getting ready for a battle here, right? Be, be on your, your guard. guard. All right, next is remain, remain strong, strong in the faith. faith. You just remain? Remain strong in the faith. faith. Do it again. Remain, remain strong in the faith. faith. Do it faster. Remain, remain strong, strong in the faith. faith. Really slow. Remain, remain strong in the faith. faith. All right, from the top. Be, Be on your guard. Remain, remain strong in the faith. faith. Good, now we're gonna go be brave. Be, be brave. brave. Do it again. Be, be brave. brave. I'll be really brave. Here we go. Be, be brave. brave. Really loud. Be, be brave. brave. All right, from the top. Be, be on your guard. guard. Remain, Remain strong in the faith. faith. Be, be brave. brave. Next is be loving. Be, be loving. loving. Give yourself a hug. Again, be, be loving. loving. Now we're going to keep going. Be loving in everything. Be, be loving, loving in everything, everything you, you do. do. Do that much? Be, be loving, loving in everything, everything you, you do. do. Be loving again. Be, be loving, loving in everything, everything you, you do. do. All right, let's do the whole thing, then we'll do the reference. Ready? Be, be on your guard. guard. Remain, Remain strong, strong in the faith. faith. Be brave. Be loving in everything you do. do. All right, this is washing machine and dryer. Remember, washing machine's open. Dryer's open, there's towels in there, they just got done washed and we're gonna pull it out. First, First start in the dryer. Corinthians, Corinthians, slam the door. 16. Now you're gonna watch it go around. 13 and 14. All right, do it again. First Corinthians, 16. Oh, come on, slam that door. 16. All right, start it over. First Corinthians, 16. 13 and 14. Watch it again. 13 and 14. Watch it again. 13 and 14. Watch it one more time. 13 and 14. Getting dizzy, one more time. 13 and 14. All right, that's fine. All right, let's do the whole thing. Here we go. Be on your guard. Remain strong in the faith. Be brave. Be loving in everything you do. 1 Corinthians 16. 13 and 14. Good job, good job. All right, you want to do a little mousey voice? Yes. Little mousey? All right, we got to get down like a little mousey. Ready? Oh, the mouse is getting old. All right, All right you ready, little mousies? Yeah. Little mousey voices with your little mousey paws. All right, here we go. Be on your guard. Remain strong in the faith. Be brave. Be loving in everything you do. For oh, it's just a little tiny washer, right? First, the rain is 60. 
All right, good mousey. All right, big bear? Sure. Big bear? Big bear. All right. Big bear voice, here we go. <laughs> big bear voice, here we go. Be on your guard. Remain strong in the faith. Be brave. Be loving in everything you do. First Corinthians 16. 13 and 14. All right, one more time, Mr. Big Bear. And it's a big washing machine. All right, here we go. Be on your guard. Remain strong in the faith. Be brave. Be loving in everything you do. First Corinthians 16, 13 and 14. All right, good job. Keep working on it. Watch, you, watch uh, Facebook and see what the challenge is this week. Have your parents do a video. Keep working on the verse. We love you guys. We'll see you next week. All right, guys, it's game time. This game is called Who Can Make You Laugh? So you're gonna sit somebody in a chair. It is their turn to try not to laugh. And then each person's gonna get in front of them. You cannot physically touch them, but you can get close, you can make faces, you can say funny things. You have 30 seconds to try to make them laugh. Do a timer each time and see how quickly that person can make them laugh and see who can make you laugh the quickest. Take turns switching up with family. You're gonna all be laughing. You're all gonna have a blast. Have a great time, we'll see you soon. Oh, and don't forget, you gotta say it to play it. So make sure you say your memory verse either as each contestant or as a family together before you play the game. Guys, we love you and we'll see you soon. What a great time we've had together today. Guys, remember, spend time with Jesus. He wants to spend time with you. All right, let's pray. God, thank you for this time together. Thank you for the ability to be able to video and come into uh, our kids' homes and our families' homes and let them feel your presence and your spirit with us. God, thank you so much for all that you do for us. Help us to find time to spend with you, God, help these kids to realize that it's so important in their relationship with you and just spending that time with you. Give them time, show them when to take the time, help them when they're not taking the time to feel your conviction, to feel your Holy Spirit moving in them to tell them to do the right thing and then spend some time with you. And then God, I pray you just bless them so much that they realize that what you say is true, that you bless us when we spend time with you and you bless us when we're obedient. God, we love you so much. We thank you for all that you do. And we pray all this in the mighty and amazing name of Jesus. And everybody says, amen. All right, guys, have a great week and we'll see you next week.